Shalom, shalom. This is Eldario from One Nation, One Power. Coming back to you, brothers and sisters, one more time. Today, let's go into our Bible and uh, let's get the breakdown according to the Bible of what righteousness is. I just got out of prayer. Boy, I feel pretty good, but let me tell you. When you do what the Most High wants you to do, you always got to expect for a spiritual attack after you do what the Most High wants you to do. That's spiritual warfare. We in spiritual warfare. But uh, I'm going to teach this little quick lesson on what righteousness is according to the Bible. Not according to me. Not according to my church. But according to the Bible. Because we have been deceived even in the word righteousness. We've been made to believe one thing because we don't read our Bible. And once again, the Bible never tells us to read it like a Harlequin novel. Now, I can sit at home and read it on my own, just read it all through like a regular book. But I'm not going to get the understanding unless I already done read it according to the precepts of Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Psalms 119, 104. Now, I'm going to take you to the, one of the most controversial, misunderstood passages in the Bible. And the reason it's misunderstood is because we never read it. We let somebody else tell us what it means. So let's go ahead and tear down. Go to Isaiah chapter 64. Get that dust off your Bible. <clears throat> King James Version Bible. Like I said before, people say, why I read out the King James? Because I can show you where they've removed verses out of all of the other Bibles. If everything we've been taught was the truth, why are they, why are they stealing verses out the Bible? Because they know you're waking up. Now we're going to read Isaiah. I want you to, right now you got your pencil and paper. Write down Deuteronomy 6.25. In Deuteronomy 6.25, it's going to tell us what our righteousness shall be to the Most High God. And it shall be our righteousness if we go on to do all of these commandments and statutes. If we do the commandments of God, we obtain righteousness. Because righteousness is in his laws. So in Deuteronomy 6.25, write that down on your paper. Now we're going to go to one of the most misinterpreted. All of our righteousness is as filthy rags. So therefore, I should not try to obtain righteousness in the New Testament. All I got to do is be saved by grace. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's what somebody made up. So, go with me to Isaiah chapter 64. Let's prove what I'm saying. Isaiah chapter 64, starting at verse 1. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. Verse 2. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causes the waters to boil, to make thy name known, to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. That's what's going to happen at the second coming. Let's keep going. Verse 3. When thou didst terrible things, which we look not for, thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. Verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen, O oh God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Verse 5. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Stop. Thou meetest him that rejoices and worketh righteousness. Stop. Isaiah 64 and 5. The Most High is happy. And he just said, he, he will meet with the people that rejoice and work righteousness. How do you work righteousness? Deuteronomy 6.25, you can pin in right here to verse number 5. Deuteronomy 6.25 is your precept for Isaiah 64 and 5. I'm going to read it real slow again. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. How do you work righteousness? By keeping the laws of God recorded in Deuteronomy 6.25. I'm praying, I'm going slow. Because we've been taught in church that all of our righteousness is as a filthy rag. And that is correct. But they take it out of context. 
If I'm trying to serve God without God's righteousness in my life, which is his law, statutes, and commandments, then I'm operating in my own righteousness. And I'm approved. Verse 5 again. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Okay. He meets with those. So that means he hearing their prayers. That means he talking to them that worketh righteousness and rejoice. Thou meetest him that rejoices and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways. Behold, thou art wroth. For we have sinned in those is continuance. And we shall be saved. Verse 6. They sinned. After they was working righteousness and rejoicing, they did sin. Verse 6. But we are as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness as filthy rags are as filthy rags. See now why their righteousness is as filthy rags? Because they in sin. See what sin is? It's when you practice in your own righteousness trying to obtain the kingdom of heaven. Go with me now. I'm trying to make this easy. Go with me now to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 20. We precept in the Bible. You guys say a prayer for me. I'm going through what I always go through, warfare. I brought that word about the false prophets. That devil came after me. I just went up to my job to pick up my check. Picked up something else too. Come on up out of here. That's how the devil works. We call it blowback. You move and do something for the most high real good that bless people and help people. Devil get mad as hell. So what do you do? He try to send sickness or send something at you to try to slow you down. Try to intimidate you. But we don't get intimidated around here. We do the intimidating. So Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 20 we're going to read because we just read in Isaiah 64 and 5 that they sinned and that their righteousness was as a filthy rat. Now, Let's prove it according to Matthew chapter 5. Everyone, verse number 20. Let's know. Let's go up. We're going to read it all the way down. Deuteronomy, I mean Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. We're going to read down. Remember, uh, Deuteronomy 6, 25. It shall be our righteousness if we're going to do all his uh, commandments. In uh, Isaiah 64, we read where there's two types of righteousness. Our righteousness is as a what? Filthy rag. But he meeteth him that rejoiceth and worketh what? Righteousness. Okay, so there's two types of righteousness there. It's our righteousness. Without serving God, without the laws and statutes of commandments, is I'm walking in my righteousness. I'm trying to do it my way to get to the kingdom. So now let's go to Matthew chapter 5. We're going to begin in verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law, are the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Verse 18. Right here in verse 17, write Acts 3 and 18. That's your precept for fulfill. Acts 3 and 18. Let's keep going. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot are in one tittle, and no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Let's go to verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, I used to be guilty of that. I had to repent. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, but whosoever shall do and teach them, then what? The law. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Stop. So you got your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and scribes. You shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now when you go back up to verse 17 and read down, you see it's talking about the law. The conversation didn't stop. The conversation continued. But he said that he that do and teach them shall be called what? Great in the kingdom of heaven. Those that don't do and teach them shall be called what? Least in the kingdom of heaven. And then he went down and said that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. You shall in no way enter into the kingdom of heaven. We trying to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So my righteousness, righteousness got to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. 
Now go back, because the scribes and the Pharisees go to Matthew 23. Let's see what they were guilty of. Our righteousness got to exceed theirs, or we shall not inherit the kingdom. Matthew 23, beginning of verse 1. Then spake Yeshua to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Verse 3. And all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that and do. But do not you after their works, for they say and do not. Stop. They say and what? Do not. Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. See, they were saying do the law, but they weren't doing it their own selves. That's why the Bible says that except our righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, we shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's why that's there, brothers and sisters. That's why that's there. I pray that I just made that very simple. Now go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. If you've been in a Christian church for over 10 years, what I just showed you is going to make you mad as hell. Why? The word of God comes to replace lies. It tears lies out. When you got a lie sitting in you and you hear the truth for the first time, you're going to get mad as hell. That's not what my pastor told me. I know it ain't. Because God didn't send your pastor. Because <laughs> I read from the Bible, word for word. What job? If you can't get this, this is not for you. That's what people don't understand. Yeshia said, uh, 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 he that heareth the words of God know it's true. He that is of God heareth the words of God. Do you hear the words of God today, my brother? The Most High trying to make you righteous, my brother. He trying to make you righteous, my sister. We're going to prove it. 1 John 2, 29. 1 John 2, 20. He also trying to make us holy. I'm coming back on a video to talk about holiness. 1 John 2, 29. Verse 29. And you know that he is righteous. You know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. We'll come right back. All right, I'm back. What was that? 1 John 2, 29. And you know that he is righteous. You know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Stop. This is 1 John 2, 29. The Bible just told us that everybody that doeth righteousness is born of him. So stay in the book of 1 John. Go over to chapter 3 and verse 7. Chapter 3 and verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. Why is that in there? Don't let nobody deceive you. Because we've been deceived. We were taught that you, you, you can't, you, you're not righteous. All your righteousness is a filthy rag. That's what we was taught. That was one of Satan's plans to keep us from trying to achieve what it is the most high wants us to achieve. He wants us to be excellent, brothers and sisters. He wants us to be better than other people. He don't want us all the same. If we was all the same, we'd be trying to be transsexuals and trying to be this and trying to be that. We'd be trying to fit in with the world. Bible says, love not the world, neither the things in the world. Hello. So we're supposed to be different. You, follow, you seeing this? 1 John 3 and 7. Little children, let no man, don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let nobody come to you and say you can't be righteous in God's eyes. Don't let nobody come to you and say that. But they did. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Stop. He that doeth righteousness is righteousness. Is righteous. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. How do you do righteousness? You can take and put Deuteronomy 6.25 right here. You do righteousness by keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. That's how you do righteousness. Now, one more. One more. I wasn't going to let the devil stop me from bringing forth the word of God, no matter how I feel. Come on up out of here. Devil should know me by now. After 20 years, you would think he would just back the hell off. But he don't. He keep on trying. 
And he's going to keep on trying until we get to the kingdom. So stay strong. Hello. Don't give up. Don't give in. You soldiers in the army of the Most High. Hello. No man that war has entangled himself with the cares of this life. But I got a burden on me to be praying for the brothers and sisters over in Venezuela. So you guys put in some prayers for our brothers and sisters that's over there in Venezuela. The beast system is doing what they do. Trying to take down every nation on the planet. Hello. Revelation chapter 22. And we want our verse number 11 to 12. We're going to prove this is the second coming of Yeshua. He's coming to the earth looking for something. Remember in the New Testament he said he prayed when he come back he find what? Faith on earth. Faith on earth. Faith in what? Faith without works is what? Dead. He come and look for people that got faith and works. In what? Righteousness. Revelation 22 and 11. He talking about when he come back. Listen to what he said. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. There going to be some unjust people when he come. There going to be some filthy people when he come. Filthy mean what? Sinners. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. So when he come back, there are going to be some righteous people on the earth that are practicing Deuteronomy 6.25, whose uh, righteousness, according to Matthew 5 and 20, shall exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes. When he return, he coming back looking for righteous people. He coming back looking for holy people. Is anybody seeing this? He coming back looking for righteous people and he coming back looking for holy people. Me, myself, I'm the type of guy that was very uh, into sports. So I'm not going to just settle for righteousness. My la my next lesson going to be on holiness. Now I grew up in a, uh, I, went, I was a minister in the church of God in Christ. We taught a form of holiness without righteousness and without the dietary laws. But they did teach us the basics about adultery and fornication. But the Most High is calling us to holiness in all of its form. The dietary law, uh, uh, living right, not committing adultery, not living in fornication. He calling us to holiness. Why? He gave us the laws in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. To our nation, to be a light unto the rest of the world. But we fell. And we fell lower, according to Deuteronomy 28. 15 and 68 than all the other nations because of the curses and now we coming back and now we teaching we're going to start teaching holiness and sanctification now the other nations are getting upset because in their eyes they see us rising above them not understanding that in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6 and 7 the original plan is that we were going to be above all of them anyway so get over it you're not going to have your foot on the back of our neck here real soon no more no more you ain't going to have your foot on our neck no more. You ain't going to be able to crack jokes about us here real soon. No more. No more. So get over it. That's the problem. They see us rising up and keeping the law, statutes, and commandments and being holy like Ezekiel 37. Can these bones live? I don't know, Ezekiel said. The most I said, prophesy to the four winds, Ezekiel. And if you know anything about uh, the four winds, the four winds are on the east, the west, the north and the south. He said prophesy. Prophesy to the wind. And then them bones begin to come back together. Them bones is us. And then he said those bones are the whole house of Israel. All 12 tribes. So for all of you out there that's coming on this channel. Peekabooing. Trying to figure out what we doing. Our God is calling us back. Our God is waking us up. Our God is cleaning us up. Our God is sanctifying us. And our God got us telling the rest of the world. You better repent. Be baptized for the remission of sins because that sky going to crack open and it's going to be too late. Let him that is filthy be filthy still. Let him that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Let him that is righteous be righteous still. Let him that is holy be holy still. Verse number 12. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man, every man according as his work shall be. Stop. According as his work shall be. Work, faith without works is what? Dead. What is my works? 
Keeping the laws in the what? Lawless society. If you can't see the wheels falling off of this place, morality is being thrown in the trash can by the world. But we don't care because we're not a part of the world. We in the world, but we're not of the world. We don't hang out at the nightclubs. We don't go out hanging out on corners. We ain't out here trying to sleep with women. We try to live a clean, sanctified, and a holy lifestyle to be an example to the rest of the world. Isaiah 49 and 6. This El Dayu from One Nation, One Power just shows you real easy. He that doeth righteousness is righteous in the eyes of the Most High. Now, it don't apply to your neighbor next door. So what would they think? It don't apply to people down the street. So what would they think? You try to live a righteous life in the eyes of the Most High. Then you're going to have those. Isn't she from Nazareth? Isn't he from Nazareth? Isn't he that one? That's them. That's them. Keep doing what the Most High called you to do, brothers and sisters. Shalom.